Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We've got Bobby back with us again today. It's good to be back. He's, so. he's got a little show and tell. I do, I yes. do. So. so I was joking that I was going to tease him because he's experienced one of the classic um, predicaments of a quilter is that you've made your first thing and then everyone starts asking if you can make them something too. Yep. My first project ever was the table runner using uh, Magic of Yosemite Charm Pack and made that for my aunt and uncle for Christmas. And of course, so my mom is into that and said, oh, I'd like one too. And so uh, I took it up a notch and we used one of the new table runner kits that we debuted a couple weeks ago. I think you so. didn't understand why people don't like Charm Packs when you had to cut them all. I, I love Charm Packs. It means you don't have to cut them all. I was very nervous about cutting my five inch squares from fat quarters because I was scared I was gonna make a mistake and then have to do it all over again and buy another, you know, table runner kit. <laughs> so. You would never need an entire table runner kit. Like yeah. six more inches of fabric would probably do you. That's true, and as I found out, you had, I mean, I did end up with a few extra squares. A couple extra, so you're so. okay. But it was very easy. I mean, the second time doing it, um, I mean, the first time I did it with you basically supervising me the whole time, and the second time, all I needed your help with was binding because I couldn't remember how to do it. and hated doing it. But other than that, it was it was much, much easier the second time around. As we discussed, so. many people hate binding. Yeah. So you're not alone in that. I understand why, because it is awful. It's it's a little tedious. <laughs> but everyone was remarking on how good your points were and your joins were. Well, that's because I was taught well the first time around. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fresh in your mind, too. It wasn't that long ago. No, that it wasn't. Something. It was a couple months ago. I think it turned out great. So Bobby's used to cutting like the tops off the fat quarters and some yardage cuts here and there. But for the most part, precision cutting, this was new for you. This was brand new for me. Um, and I said it was a little, little nerve wracking. You know, I, I'm used to cutting the tops off, but you get this nice, nice fat quarter and you think, OK, that's perfect. And then you're like, man, I got to cut into this. It's kind of a little bit. A little nerve-wracking to do, but um, you know, squares aren't that difficult. If you ask me to do some triangles or diamonds, I might be a little bit more of a, a higher level of learning. But uh, no, this wasn't actually that bad when I actually started doing it. Yeah, it's this was one of the first projects that I did on repeat when I was a quilter. I made dozens of these, and it was just because they were easy. They yeah, were really easy. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you are a beginning quilter, out, beginner quilter out there. Uh, you know, I can't recommend this project enough. It is very easy. It's a good way to get you confident with how to use a sewing machine, how to get your quarter inch seams, um, you know, how to join uh, rows together, you know, basically everything you need to do that will, I'm sure, pay off at some point down the line when you start taking it to a bigger level. I mean, so I really can't recommend this project enough. That is the, the main part of this is, is in, I mean, once you get the hang of it, it can happen in a couple hours, but for you in a couple of days working mm -hmm. at it steadily. Um, you were able to get everything cut and practice that, piece it together, work on getting good joins, layering, basting, quilting, and doing binding. And so you learn all the steps, but in a nice, easy to handle and low cost yeah. way. So you're not like freaking out like, oh my gosh, I spent hundreds of dollars on this kit and now I'm not sure I can do it because I'm very overwhelmed. And the amount of, uh, pro or I don't want to say progress, but confidence that I gained just from doing it the first time to the second time. So I think you did a great job. So do all the, all the seasoned <laughs> quilters here. So, so if I can, if I can do it, anybody can do this. So <laughs> that is, that is true. My eight year old can do this as well. She did this when this type of thing, when she was six, she made a lap quilt <laughs> in this type of format. So that's not dissing you or anybody else who's new. It, it's just showing that it truly is. It, it is easy when you take the time to learn the steps. What it shows is you're never too young or too old. To start learning, I I would feel like people would call you very young. Well, many, okay, many of our typical but I'm not cultures. six. <laughs> this <so>. is true. <laughs> this is true. And I really like this fabric. When we when we were kind of putting the uh, design together, um, I really liked how it turned out digitally. And, and now that we've done it, you know, actually see the finished product. I mean, I really like how it turns out. We've got we six do. different we variations, but options. three different colors. So so it's three different colors. What changes is there's like one fabric that swaps out. Like in this one, the busy flower swaps out for a- Priscilla pinking. The pinking, yeah. So, you know, if you want a less busy one, you can choose, I think option two yeah. always has that one. Yeah, this one is option two and it has the pinking and one has a busy flower. And then this is the other version of the blue, which has the busy flower in it. So they're all really pretty. We can show you the digital images of that. All right, well, thank you for doing a little show and tell. Now you get to give it to your mom. You Absolutely. have to give us the reaction. I have one more to make too. You I've do, got, you have your uh, own. 
with you have... Purple Rain, if I remember correctly. Yep. I had one row together. That was actually the first thing I ever did. And yes. then I pivoted to because I needed to get the, the gift done for Christmas. So I, I think you to took it. an hour to decide where all the fabrics were going to go. If yeah, I that remember was, correctly, you know, actually that's why I like this one. I mean, I know the scrappiness is is appealing to a lot, but I liked this because I didn't have to worry about okay where matching everything because that did take me a long time both both times around when you're kind of trying to make sure everything works. I mean, this is actually really nice because it is. Um, you know, in a, an actual pattern. You can if you don't want it to be like the scrappiness of the charm pack, four fat quarters. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And it's not as busy. So you'll have to come to one of our Saturday or Sunday sew-ins. And get that one done. I think, I, I, think one. I could do, I think I, now I'm confident enough I could probably finish this in a day. Probably. So I'm going to get back to more new products, but thank you, Bobby, for showing off your second project ever. Yeah, absolutely. So it turned out way better than my second project ever. No, I don't oh, believe that. Oh, it is because I didn't know what a quarter inch seam was. Oh, that's right. So yeah. I sewed everything with three inch inch seam and it was generally a hot mess, but I enjoyed the process, so I kept doing it. All right, now we're going to switch over to the newest fabric collection that we have received, and that is Zen Garden, designed by Stephanie Brandenburg of Fraun Design Studios. And now that's being printed through Northcott, so we're happy to be able to bring that to you. I love Stephanie Brandenburg. She's kind of local-ish to me, so we used to see each other on the show circuit a lot when I was um, traveling to do those. And I have always been a fan of hers, but I'm very excited that we can now get it through Northcott. Um, this is a fantastic line. So Stephanie is a painter, and then the paintings end up getting translated into fabric. And the designs are just stunning. So this one comes with a panel, and then one that we're kind of treating as a panel. So we're gonna take a look at this one. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. She's really kind of known for these like painterly drips that kind of come down and create something. So this one is gonna turn into a tree. And it looks just so, so, so gorgeous. We got multiple levels and then we kind of have, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, but it cuts off kind of mid trunk there. But you can see all the drips are continuing to come down and they just kind of turn into the green of the tree. It's just absolutely stunning. Now this next one is technically running yardage, but the repeat is just shy of 24 inches. So what we did is we cut it as a panel and we cut up the seam of each leaf and that's where it truly looks best, where we end up with this centered, um, I think it's called Hosta. If you've owned a house, you have Hostas somewhere, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. And we get that beautiful painterly texture. And we're also starting to see a lot of blue that we're gonna see later on in that collection. So any of these panels you can use as is, big on the quilt, kind of just surround it with blocks and borders, or you can cut up pieces of it. We did this with Ladies Chain for the latest Shell Rummel that we put together. And I chose my favorite parts of it to go in those bigger squares. So that's also something you can do with these panels. The rest of the prints work very well as fat quarters and half yards, but we also have yardage available of them. We also have extra panels available as well. Um, these are really, really pretty. Um, this one to me looks like some sort of a stick structure, but also kind of like a stained glass window, um, but it definitely has that natural wood look. And then we have our painterly texture. I'm actually gonna flip it. I think it goes this way because the drips are coming down and it just looks so pretty with that green blue. So this one is a very leafy design. They're kind of um, frond like fern textures coming up. And it is so pretty with the different colors of green. And then we have that, again, green, blue painterly texture in the background. This is the last of our greens. And if you're familiar with Stephanie Brandenburg, you know that she has another basic, and this is different than that. This one is called Watercolors, and it is absolutely gorgeous. But again, it has that great texture of color to where it's gonna help support some of the other prints that really are big and bold, and we wanna have the eye focus on those. Here's that leafy print again, just this time it is more of a blue texture. We have a little bit of sea foam in there and hints of purple, it's very pretty. Here's another one of those watercolors. It's very deep blue, almost little tiny hints of purple. It is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. It would look great as water or again to help support some of these other colors. This blue is a little bit lighter, but I wouldn't call it light blue. It's very much medium, but within it, you can see that there's different textures and color values. We definitely are lighter here and darker here. It kind of reminds me of like when you're looking at aerial footage of the ocean and it just starts to get that deeper blue as you go out deeper. It just is stunning. 
Here are our ferns again, this time in a very magenta hue with hints of light blue, a little bit of coral, and also some blue purple um, accenting those leaves. It's absolutely gorgeous. And we do have a little bit of this color in the panel. So this is going to be a good way to bring that out, maybe as a skinny border or something going around the original panel. This one is really cool. It looks like wood plank and it's got the knots in it and everything. Looks absolutely beautiful. You could use this big. This could make a really fun border, especially maybe a mitered border, but also just the color and texture on its own is gonna be great with sort of like the stick look to some of this. And then there's also that brown in the original panel. This stripe is also really, really pretty. I can't tell if it reminds me more of like sand where like the ripples are created from the waves coming in and out or maybe like the strata of the different layers of bedrock that have been compressed over time. But I, either way, I really like it. Almost it could be like a rusty corrugated metal something or other too. It just is really stunningly gorgeous and it's gonna look great supporting our other colors. And last but not least, we have ceiling tins. And this is painted and designed to look like those antique ceiling tins that have seen better days, but they have the beauty in its distressed age. And so this is absolutely gorgeous. The colors tie in really well, especially with some of these um, browns, but even the blues will help bring this out because it's very much a gray blue in there. It's really a gorgeous collection. I think you guys are gonna love it. We have fat quarter bundles, we have half yard bundles, we have yardage, we have extra panels, and every panel is included in both the fat quarters and the half yards because we were able to do that this month. We aren't always able to include it in both. So you can definitely add this to your stash. I know I have a ton of Stephanie Brandenburg. I love it. I haven't done anything with it yet, but it looks really pretty on my shelves. And someday I will turn it into something fabulous. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up with some new tourist tote kits. These have been out, I think, since Christmas. So we came up with some new variations for you all. And I think you're really gonna love them. We've got some lower cost versions that are just made with quilting cotton and some ones that are have some canvas in it. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's also gonna be more durable and last longer for you. Let's take a peek. I have to say at the Quilt Addicts Anonymous Christmas party, like these are the hot commodity. Everybody wants one of these because it holds so much. I have one that I've used daily for like four years, five years, and it just now like needs a new uh, a one created. I used a cork bottom and a canvas top and that thing has goes with me everywhere. It fits my knitting projects. Um, right now, one of our team had their biggest shawl ever is in here. So she feels like she needs another one because her current one is all taken up with that. But I throw all kinds of stuff in here and my laptop will fit in here, my knitting project, stuff for my kids, diapers, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. So this version is from Art Gallery and it's really, really stunning. Their canvas is 60, I think six inches wide, close to it. Um, so you have a little bit extra that you could make maybe a coordinating wallet or something with, but the colors are just stunningly gorgeous on this. And that canvas bottom is going to hold up really well for you. Plus we made sure to pick a really dark color. So that way it's not going to show the dirt so much when it gets set down on the ground, but we have a nice light floral print for the top. And I made sure in every picture that we took that you could see a sliver of the lining. We have a nice light lining in this one. So you can easily see what you're digging for in your bag. Next we have Among Friends. This is from Cotton and Steel. Um, this is a collection we got last year and we're always trying to come up with new ways to use it because I know a lot of times you guys will see a collection, you like it, but you're like, well, what should it be? And so that's, that's our job to come up with something fun for you. And so this is one of the options. This is the teal option from Among Friends. I really love the like yellowy green in here it really makes that dark pop and again dark print on the bottom and for the handle so it won't sure show that dirt and grime and these birds are so fun like they just you want to take a minute to make sure that you're cutting as straight as you can so that they're nice and straight there but it really turned out good this one looks really great and then we have kind of that sea foam um, dot lining in there. So everything coordinates beautifully and looks great. Then we have its companion. This is the coral version. It is the exact same fabrics as before, but in a different colorway. So this one is more blue and coral for our bottom. And then obviously a lot of coral up top 
and then we have more of a blue dot on the inside. So the combination is really fun. It looks great. Either of these would work really well, and these are both gonna be lower cost options because they are all made from quilting cotton. And I will tell you, um, the one that we made for the cotton and steel one, we had somebody make that in half a, half a day in just to do the sample start to finish started it finished it in the same afternoon as she was working on it so these go together really really fast that included all the cutting all the fusing all the sewing turning the bag right side out all those things so this is a really fast bag it's a great beginner bag because there's no zippers there's no hardware it's just you know your two top pieces for your front and back two pieces for your bottom two pieces for your handle and two pieces for your lining done you know pretty easy peasy and we've got a video tutorial to walk you through every single step well that's all we have for this week's tutorial um i i want to throw this out there if you made it to the end of the video make sure you comment below on whether this is something you'd be interested in so i don't um always read the youtube comments because they used to be pretty nasty in the past so a lot of times when someone's replying to youtube comments it's stephanie brennan who does our customer service to save my mental health. But we've been getting a lot of questions recently about like what foundation I use, what lipstick do I use, what do I do to my hair to keep it looking healthy and things like that. So would you guys, I know this is out of left field, be interested in like a get ready with me video where like I bring my makeup set in and my flat iron and I like, <laughs> you see me go from like the hot mess that I usually am when I walk into the office to what you see here on camera. And I kind of talk through what I use and um, why I like it. And maybe we can talk about some other more personal things too, because I know you guys enjoyed it when I talked about how we rescue dogs and we adopt senior dogs um, because they deserve love too. And you guys like seeing that side of me. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. We certainly are not going to become a makeup channel by any means. Um, because I am not a makeup artist. I know enough to be able to look presentable for you all on YouTube. But um, if that's something you're interested in, I would be happy to do that for you guys. But leave a comment below if that's something you wanna see and we can make that happen. I guess I'm committing to it now if, if enough people say yes. So comment below if you want a get ready with me video and I can talk about what I use and why and maybe just some life stuff. So anyway, so feel really weird asking that question. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.